Hi folks, welcome to another episode. Today, we are going to put together the Tormach enclosure for the PCNC 1100 mil. It's totally in its crate right now, so what we're gonna do is just dive right in. Don't worry, I will use plenty of fast forwarding. We're gonna keep this video nice and crisp. And once we get it together or at the end or throughout the video, we'll talk about the features of it, why I like to have it, why I got one, and we'll probably even talk a little bit about the pricing of it. I'm guessing some folks are gonna have some heartburn on the price, and I've got my own opinions. And so, uh, well, let's dive right in. Okay, opening up the crate, it is very well packaged. I give them a lot of credit. Everything was very well protected inside. There are a lot of pieces to this. Here we've got the relocation for the computer and keyboard kit. We've got to remove the existing control panel. So we undo a few of these wires and unscrew a few pieces here. Nothing too complicated. You can see we're going to save the e-stop switch here. It just pops out with a little screwdriver. General tip for this project, which is clean out your chip pan. You're going to drop screws and they're a lot easier to find in a clean chip pan. This is the uh, DIN for the accessory port. You also relocate it, which we'll see here in a second. Sorry, here's the e-stop. Okay, it took me a second to find this in the directions because it says to unplug, unplug the DIN and the e uh, unplug the DIN and then unplug the e-stop and then it just goes to the next step which is assembling the new thing and there's a note, it's not a step, that says the rest of this operator panel can be removed and discarded. I'm obviously going to keep it tight, keep it on the side here for a second. Next up, you roll this uh, tape stuff out. You want to make sure there's no crack in the seams here. And I found that you can go a little, just a hair long, you know, 16th of an inch and push it down in there. I've still got the backing tape on it. And then eight of these screws with lock washers and nuts, uh, eight millimeter wrench will work. And we're gonna mount this thing in uh, this guy right here. Okay, the directions say so, um, to mount this little circuit board that came with the relocation kit and then the existing oops, DIN connector to, on the left side of the panel, and the, it's a little bit hard to figure out where they uh, are referring to in the manual, mid-height on the left side. Uh, I assume that these, this is, the screws here are for the existing computer uh, monitor mount and keyboard mount. Those will, I think, go away. Um, I think you need to be able to see the two LEDs though, so you want it oriented this way, and then you obviously can't have it out here because you need the door to close, so I'm actually just going to set it, you know, right like so. Using a one inch hole saw here to make the clearance hole in the sheet metal. Test this bracket for fit and make sure the door closes and the cables reach and stretch and all that before you uh, screw down all four bolts. You reuse the e-stop. You put it back in the little project box that they uh, were now using for our machine on and the uh, e-stop switch itself and then close this back up. Okay, you're supposed to mount this now. They show it in the book being on the front of the uh, original stand. And I think you're supposed to use these sheet metal type screws. Um, and you can, you can fit them through the existing threaded holes that the cover closes with. I'm not going to mount it right now because I, you know, it seems silly to me to mount something like that when you're just about to redesign the whole functionality of the machine. So I don't think there's any reason we can't mount it later. Let's, uh, let's get this enclosure finished and then we'll decide where it makes sense to go. Here we're making uh, use of an existing hole for the cable connector clamp to slide the new e-stop start button cable through, which we then need to wire up. This is the other end of the control box cable. The book said these were wired. They weren't. I had to strip this back off. Uh, red 
is 102, black is 103, white's 104, and green is ground. It's in the manual. Next, you're supposed to follow the instructions and mount the wires up to the existing harness. Um, newer machines will have a terminal block. I was supposed to install one and use it. Uh, I didn't really feel like drilling another hole and dealing with it, so I just use these little spade terminals, and that's gonna let me easily connect these up and keep things sort of modular. Uh, and I'm just gonna tape off the ones, obviously, that so there's nothing uh, live or that can short out the cabinet. To review, the four lines coming out of the new black cable harness, 102 is the red, 104 is the white, 103 is the black. Uh, come back to this in a second. I've, uh, Tormach does a great job with all the labeling and numbers. I really commend them on that. 104 and 105 get jumped together. They include this jumper wire. It's labeled 104, 105. Same thing with 204, 205, and then 202 and 203. So that's really it. Uh, I just shot an email off to Tormach. They show a ground clamp on the door, which would connect to this green one. I don't have that, so I need to figure out what to do about that. Um, and then, like I said, I'm going to tape these up so that there's no shorting between them. That would be unacceptable and very bad. And then the next thing we do is pull this foam stuff out here. They say to take the door off. Um, let's give it a shot and leave the door on, see how that works. I, I think the door just lifts off, so it's not, it wouldn't be, a, yeah, just like so. Not a big deal to take it off, actually. In fact, you know what? Yeah, I guess it's probably better to take it off. This new foam went in great, no real problems with it. It's really nice stuff. You're gonna, I did try to close the door without trimming the foam down and that didn't work. So you're about to see me use a box cutter knife to take a little bit of the, a bit of the thickness off of it right here, which, uh, which makes the door shut, but uh, still pretty darn good seal. Wait about one week to trim off this excess tape here that squeezes out. That way it's really settled. And for the perfect final touch of part one of this series.